Well, good morning, Country Faith Church family. Thanks for joining us this morning. We are excited to spend time with you this morning in God's presence. We have a great, amazing um, Lord that we're going to be worshiping and praising, and we are privileged to be doing that with you this morning. Um, we are going to continue to be uh, accomplishing our mission here at Country Faith Church, and that mission is to be growing together growing and working together to love God, love each other, and spread the gospel. Um, If you're a newcomer that is joining alongside of us, we would love to have you um, be a part of that mission as well. And the best way to connect with us is by filling out a connection card. You can do that online by clicking the link in the description section of the video that you're watching, or you can go to our website, countryfaith.org, and click on the purple connect button. Um, There's lots of great resources on the website, so I just want to encourage you guys to go and check that out and use that as a regular resource for your connection here at CFC. Um, We're also excited to um, talk with you and get to know you as an individual, and we love connecting with newcomers. And speaking of newcomers, we have a new person in our church family that we would love to introduce to you guys. Um, Mike and Sierra Hubert have been expecting Um, a baby, and a couple weeks ago, they had the blessing of welcoming their son, Jude Michael, into their family. And so we are really excited for the Hubert family and want to just say congratulations to you guys. And um, we're just so thankful for the blessing that God has given your family and that we can enjoy him here at the CFC church family as well. Um, We really do believe that Each life is a gift from God and that God is the author of life. And so we are just thanking and praising him for that life. Um, We also believe that God is not only the author of life, but the sustainer of life. Colossians talks about um, how all things are made through God and that he sustains those things. So if we have any kinds of needs, we can go to God, our Heavenly Father, and present those needs to him who is the sustainer of life. So if you have a physical or spiritual or emotional need this morning, whatever it is, um, just bring those things before God and he can answer them. We do have prayer ministers that are available that would love to pray with you. So if you would either text or call the number that is on the bottom of your screen, um, somebody will follow up with you after the service and make sure that they pray with you for that need. Um, Last week, we had a request come in for somebody that was experiencing some pain in the eye and discomfort. And shortly after, we got a a report that that had cleared up and that wasn't a problem anymore. So we're just praising God for an answered prayer there. So we have a great Heavenly Father, and we want to spend time this morning praising and worshiping Him. So I just want to encourage you guys to join with us now as we worship. All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We just want to come together this morning and just worship the Lord. Father, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy, Lord. It's new every day. Lord, we know that you love us no matter what, God. And God, we know that you're always there. And Father, we just give you praise and we want to worship you this morning, God. You are our confidence, God. And we love you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It is. 
every circumstance, no matter where I am, I take you at your word, you take me by the hand, you lead me through the dark into the promised land, Jesus you are my Heart is breaking. Cause when my heart is breaking, you are my strength unfailing. You are my light unfading. Jesus, you
you would just fling wide the doors of heaven. God, that you would just pour out. God, that you'd move in this land, that you'd move in our homes, that you'd move in our workplaces. But Lord, we just ask that you would start right now in our hearts. God, that you would just fill us up right now. even though we're dispersed all over the place and not gathered in one place. God, I'm thankful that you are not limited by a building, that you're not limited to our location, or that you're not limited to small numbers in a living room, but that your Holy Spirit moves just as much in our living room as it does in a sanctuary. God, I just pray that you would do that this morning. God, that your Holy Spirit would come and invade our hearts, God. Greetings. Thank you for welcoming, welcoming me and us into your home again. Uh, everybody who's watching, uh, we're privileged uh, to share the Word of God with you. And Country Faith Church family, just love you all and miss you so much. We're praying for you daily. I want to start today with a sheltering in tip for parents. And parents, if you are 
feeling guilty that your kids are watching too much TV, here's the tip. Turn off the volume, turn on the subtitles, and they'll be reading. Uh, actually, that was a joke. On a more serious note, these are difficult times. These are times we haven't been down this road before, but they're also times of great opportunity. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't done so yet, go to our webpage, countryfaith.org. There's a yellow bar at the top on the homepage, and it says Faith Builder Videos. And one of our elders, Andy Hubert, shared a very encouraging word about perspective. So click on that, watch it, you'll be blessed. We're going to start today with a text of scripture from the Gospel of Luke, fairly well known. It's a story about uh, part of a day in the life of Jesus and two of his very best friends. So let's start Luke chapter 10, verse 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. I know when Becky and I have discussed this text of scripture, she feels bad for Martha and thinks, Martha got a bum rap. And, and certainly we, we would all sympathize with that. Here's the picture. Jesus and his 12 disciples stop in Bethany on their way to Jerusalem. Mary and Martha were friends. Their brother Lazarus was a, a friend. This was a resting place for Jesus. He'd been there a number of times and uh, loved them dearly. We see that in the story of Lazarus. And Martha welcomes them into the home, and she's got a big dinner to prepare. At least 13, probably more, uh, maybe some town friends. Jesus often had others following him. She's got a big dinner to, to fix for this house full of company. And she's starting to do her thing, and this is not the age of microwaves and electric stoves and ovens and gas. I mean, this is, we got to get things going here. We've got to get some food together. We've got to prepare a dinner. This is the Messiah, the prophet. He's here and his disciples, special. And she's scurrying around doing all these things. And ladies, I'm sure you can relate to that. Maybe we all can picture a time where we were involved in having to do something and we looked over at a family member or maybe a friend and they're just sitting around not helping. And Martha is watching her sister sitting there and she's doing all this work and all this weight of responsibility to fix this dinner for a special guest. And Mary's not helping and she's fuming. She's, it's just building up in her. She's getting more and more frustrated and angry. Finally, she goes over to the Lord. She goes over to Jesus and says something, uh, expressing that frustration. Don't you think this is unfair? Tell her to help me. Uh, we, we have a word in Yiddish, the Jewish language, called chutzpah. It means, boy, that's a lot of nerve. She's telling Jesus what's fair and what's not, and then telling him what he should tell her sister. She was one frustrated woman. Now, there's a key verse, I mean, there's a key word in verse 40, and I'd like to put that up right now, verse 40, and look at this. It's an indiscreet word. It's a four-letter word. I'm gonna, uh, I'll just pat you on the back if you could guess where I'm going with this, what word it is. But let me just say this, that if Mary was off to the side and she was texting with her friends or she was uh, on Facebook or maybe TikTok wa watching the latest dances, <clears throat> yeah, I actually know about that, uh, Obviously, they didn't have those things. But let's say Mary was just sitting out in the sun, relaxing. Maybe she was chatting. Martha looked outside and she was chatting with the friends, getting the latest gossip in Bethany, what's happening and who was with who and so forth. Uh, she wasn't doing that. Um, the key word in verse 40 is the word here, H-E-R-E. -E. And she says, Lord... Don't you think it's unfair? Doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister sits here? 
See, here was none of those things I just mentioned. It wasn't that Mary was just being lazy or just talking with people. She was sitting here. Let's go to verse 39 and look at that now. Where was here? Verse 39. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. That's where Mary was. She wasn't out just being lazy. She was sitting at the feet of Jesus because Jesus was teaching and Mary was hungry and hanging on every word that Jesus was teaching. That's where here it was, and that's why it was so important. You know, um, let's, let's look at verse 42a, actually, because Jesus says that. He's very gentle with Martha. He says, my dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing. This is what he says to her. There's only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it. And you know what that one thing was? That when Jesus is talking, when Jesus is teaching, there's nothing more important than sitting at his feet and listening to the master teach. That's why it's so important. The Lord speaks to us from Genesis to Revelation. And here he's actually in the flesh. He's here as the son of God, the Messiah, the savior of the world. And he's teaching and Mary knew there's nothing more important. I'd be in there, I believe she'd be in there helping her sister do the dinner. But Jesus is here and he's teaching and she was hanging on every word. One thing, she discovered it and Jesus said, it's the one thing worth being concerned about. Mary's discovered it and nobody's gonna take it away from her. You see, I believe Martha was a great gal. She loved the Lord. She believed he was the Messiah. We see that later. Uh, he was, she was a hardworking, hospitable servant. She had many great qualities. But one thing was happening in this situation that was more important than having dinner ready on time, and that was to listen to Jesus as he was teaching. So I just want to ask you, Jesus said to Martha, Mary has discovered it. Have we discovered it? Are we a people that hunger to hear the word of God? As I said, Jesus isn't with us in the flesh now. But he's given us his word, Genesis to Revelation. He speaks to us. We have his Holy Spirit. Do we take the time daily, like Mary, to hunger, to have God speak to us and teach us through his word, to hear truth, to hear the words of life, to be instructed on how to live? That's the one thing that's more important than anything else. This is a real lesson to us, that we would be like Mary, that we would be people, Christians, that love God and hunger for his word and hunger for having him speak to our hearts through his word and by his spirit. We're starting a series, maybe you noticed, the title today is At the Master's Feet. And I want this to be the foundation of it, is we want to be a people that hunger for the word of God. We want to be a people that hunger to have the Lord speak to us, that we might listen and hear and obey and live lives that please him and glorify him. So the series is at the master's feet and it's about the parables of Jesus. We're gonna go week by week. We don't know how many weeks it's gonna take. Pastor Brad next week will pick one of the parables and that Jesus uh, spoke and taught and he will expound on it. And I wanna just give you a, a, a simple definition for a parable and we have a slide that will appear. A simple story, a parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. And it's actually a style of teaching that Jesus used quite often in his ministry. He spoke many parables. Let me just give you a quick example. I could say to you, God loves you so much that no matter what you do, uh, no matter how sinful your lifestyle, that if you repent, and come back to him in faith, he will receive you and love you no matter what. I could tell you that and it would be true, but you know, that's not what Jesus did. Jesus told a story about a, a father who had two sons and the younger son came to him one day and said, dad, I want my inheritance and I want it now. And the father gave him the, the inheritance. And the Bible tells us in the story that Jesus told that he went off and he spent that inheritance uh, partying, living in the world, living a sinful lifestyle, even hiring prostitutes, and came to a point where he spent and blew all his money on sinful living. 
And he went to work for a pig farmer and he was feeding pigs and wished that he could eat as good as the pigs. And we know that story as the parable of the prodigal son. I don't want to go into it anymore because we'll probably touch on that in this series. See, Jesus told the story and had great power and effectiveness in getting the point across that the Father does love us. And if we come back in humility and repentance, having wandered away, he will receive us. Uh, I want to go to 2 Samuel and look at an example in the Old Testament. And this is a story where David, King David, the man after God's own heart, is at the lowest point of his life. And he has uh, lusted after a woman while his army was off to war. And he sends for her. He has an affair with her. Uh, she gets pregnant and he calls for her husband to come back from the battle, hoping he'll go into her and they'll think the child was, uh, was the husband's. He won't do it because he's an honorable man. And then David has the man, sends him back with a letter and tells the commander, set him in the hottest part of the battle, withdraw, make sure he gets killed. David actually commits adultery and then has the husband of the wife he shouldn't have been with uh, murdered. And he hides it but he doesn't hide it from God. And in 2 Samuel chapter 12, let's read this story. So the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to tell David this story. I want you to notice that God tells uh, a prophet, Nathan, who was one of David's advisors, tell David this story. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned nothing but one little lamb he had bought. He raised that little lamb and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. One day a guest arrived at the home of the rich man. But instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guest. David was furious. As surely as the Lord lives, he vowed, any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. He must repay for four lambs to the poor man for the one he stole and for having no pity. Then Nathan said to David, I believe pointing his finger at him, you are that man. See, God sent Nathan and he didn't say to David, you've sinned and you need to repent. God sent him with a story, a parable that brought out uh, how grievous uh, David's sin was. And David did go on to repent, thank the Lord. So I just want you to see these are two examples of the power that parables have to touch our hearts and speak to us and reveal God's truth. Now I'd like to go to Matthew chapter 13 and look at a, a text of scripture there. Now this, we're going to read the account of Jesus had just shared a story, a parable that we refer to as the parable of the sower and the seed, or probably more accurately, the parable of the soils of people's hearts. And we'll take it up in verse 10. He had just shared this. And in verse 10, it says, his disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. For those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That is why I use these parables, for they look, but they do not really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, so they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, and they didn't see it. And they long to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. So very interesting. Jesus speaks the parable, and his disciples come and say, how come you're speaking in parables that obviously some are not understanding? And Jesus gives the answer. Isaiah actually prophesied it, 
that there are people who followed Jesus because of his celebrity. Uh, he was a controversial character uh, for many. And, but he had the effect where there were some that were just opposed. They didn't want to hear. They, they were against him. Uh, they listened, but they didn't hear their hearts. And Jesus said, why was that? Because their hearts were hardened. Their hearts were hardened to the truth. Uh, I know in John chapter 3, he said, he came as the light unto the world, but there are those who preferred darkness, and they didn't want to come into the light. There are people that just reject Jesus. Uh, I, I rejected Jesus when I first heard about him. But by the mercy of God, he worked on me and softened my heart. But here's the issue. There's two people. And those that were, that were hearing and they didn't really want to listen, their hearts were hard and they didn't get anything. Jesus said, even the little they have will be taken away from them. But you, to you, it's given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. And for those of us who know the Lord and have received him, we want to be those people. We're given the privilege of understanding the mysteries of the kingdom that Jesus spoke and spoke often in parables that when we come to him as his followers and we listen with soft, hungry hearts like that of Mary, when we hang on his every word and our, our heart is, Lord, speak to me. I really want to hear truth. I really want to walk in the light. I want, I want to really know what's right. I really want to know what pleases you. So teach me, Lord. Uh, when we, his followers, come to him that way, he said, it's, it's your privilege to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Let's go to verse, verses uh, 16 and 17 again in Matthew 13. And he says this. This is quite profound. This is after he explains to his disciples and then he shares about Isaiah's prophecy. And he says, but blessed are your eyes. So you're in that other group. You're not the ones with the hard hearts that are rejecting my teaching. You're the ones with the soft hearts that are listening, hearing, your eyes are getting enlightened and you're growing. And he says, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I tell you the truth. Many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they longed to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. What was Jesus saying here? Well, he was saying, like, from the beginning of time, right back in, in the garden in Genesis at the fall, when God spoke to the devil and, and, and told him uh, the thing that, things that are going to happen in the future, he said, the seed of the woman, there's one that's going to be born of a woman. He's going to crush your head. You'll bruise his heel, but he'll crush your head. Starting in Genesis 3.15, and the hundreds of prophecies through the Old Testament uh, prophesied by the prophets. They had the Spirit of God move in them, and they knew. Uh, Jesus even told the Jews at one point, you search the Scriptures, the Old Testament Scriptures, because in them you think you have eternal life, but they, these Scriptures speak of me, and I'm right here, and you're rejecting me, is what he was saying. But he's saying, so he's saying, many righteous people, many prophets long to see, they looked forward to the day that God, the creator God, the God of the Bible, the God of Israel would send his son. He would send the savior of the world, the promised one, the Messiah, the anointed one who would come and reconcile the world back to God. Jesus is saying many looked forward to hearing the things, uh, but they never heard them. They died in the Old Testament looking forward to the promise of the Messiah coming as the Savior of the world. Many righteous, many prophets look forward. And you, you right here, my disciples and those that are following me, I tell you the truth. They looked forward to these things. They didn't see it. They longed to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. I, I just want to say there's, there's basically three, three groups of people. There's those that lived before Jesus came. There's those that lived while Jesus was here and taught, and that's these folks. And then there's those of us who have received the truth of his word that are living after. Those before were looking forward to the cross, to the redemption that God would, would wrought for the human race, that he would uh, give his son to die for the sins of the world. Those that were right there were experiencing it, they followed him, they heard his teachings, they watched him get crucified, they were there when he was resurrected and then ascended. And for the rest of us, we look back and go, there's the gospel, there's Jesus, the savior of the world, the promise, the one who fulfilled all those promises and, and gave himself for us. And we look back and again, 
uh, brothers and sisters, we have the Holy Scriptures. We have his teachings. We have his Holy Spirit with us and in us, leading us into all truth. Do you realize, do you realize how privileged we are that we can read the words of Christ, we can hear the words of Christ, we can hear the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. This is what drove John in his epistle to just declare, behold, like, whoa, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. What an amazing privilege. Every day we get to wake up, no matter what the weather's like, no matter how we're feeling or maybe the dream we had, uh, we can wake up and we, when we get focused, we realize God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loves me. He's the giver of every good gift. He's the one who saved me. He's the one who sent his son. Jesus is the one who came and, and poured out his life and gave himself for us. And we get to wake up every morning as a Christian and go, we're children of God. We, we know the Lord Jesus Christ. We've received him. We've been washed by his blood. We're cleansed. We're made righteous by his grace. We are so privileged. And we are privileged to sit at his feet and hear his word. And as we go into this series and study the parables, I just really want to encourage us that we would have that heart of Mary, that everything else would be secondary, secondary and in our lives, our, our greatest concern is we want to walk with the Lord. We want to be people that uh, tremble at his word and love his word and, and let his word minister to us. And we want to be a people that... Um, do what we're going to do right now. We're going to ask uh, Andrew and Brad to lead us again in the song, Word of God Speak. I asked if they would sing that song this week. It's a beautiful prayer. It's a beautiful declaration. Lord, let your word, word of God speak. And Jesus was the living word. Speak to us, Lord. So uh, I just want to invite you right where you are in your homes and maybe your families and to just go into a spirit of worship now and sing this song as a prayer to the Lord where you're saying, God, I want my heart to be like Mary. I want to be one that sits at your feet. I want to cherish and treasure your word, your teachings. I want them, Lord, to be the guide for my life. So let's worship together now as our brothers lead us in this song.
Well, I hope you enjoyed singing that song again. Beautiful, beautiful words and lyrics. And I want to close reading the words of Christ at the end of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7. And then we'll close with a word of prayer. This is after probably the most amazing sermon ever preached. And Jesus ends, uh, he, he touched on various subjects uh, of how to live and, and um, what pleases God and what doesn't and how to pray and uh, just numerous things and not judging others and, and so forth. And he ends the sermon saying, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. What a way to end the sermon powerful words. You'll notice here there's two groups of people. They both heard the teachings of Jesus. And they both had rains and storms come into their lives. The difference between the two groups is the first group not only heard the teachings of Christ, but they obeyed them. They took them to heart and they made them, they let that, they let the truth of Jesus' teaching come into their mind, go to their heart, and hit their feet. They, they obeyed. They walked the word of the Lord. They walked it out. And then there's the group they heard, and they just didn't, they, they heard it, but they didn't apply it. They didn't obey it. And the difference is, Jesus said, the first group, they're wise. He's not talking about building a physical house. He's talking about our lives. He's talking about the, the life that we live. Is it going to last? Is it going to go through the storms of life? And is it going to go to a glorious end in eternity with him? That's what we want. We want to be wise builders. We want to live our lives so that we're obeying the Lord and we're glorifying him. And we leave, uh, we, when we leave this world, we go to be with him forever and leave behind us a legacy for others to follow. The other group, they heard, but they didn't listen and obey. Beloved, I want all of us to be that first group. So I encourage you as we get into this series on the Proverbs, uh, I, I pray you pray for us as pastors and teachers that we would uh, do a good job in expounding God's word, but that we would be a people that come like Mary and we'd be hungry every week to listen to see what God has to say to us. Every day we'd be people in the word saying, speak to us, Lord. We would hear what he has to say and we would be people that follow and that we would be people who are building wisely and not foolishly. May God bless you and have a great week and let's be a people again that are hungry for the word of God. God bless you and thank you.